Welcome to Read, Watch, Play, your dive into the stories we love and how they're adapt. <laughs> Never mind. We don't need to do that. This is just a bonus episode. <laughs> Nick, what are we doing here? It's the holidays. What's happening? Dude, this is our favorite thing. So, we've read, watched, played, or uh, in my case, listened to uh, for some of these. <laughs> um, what, do you, uh, what do you got for us, Randy? You, we're doing five, ten? I know you had a list of 35 you told me you wanted yeah, to cover. Yeah, I had so. about 35 that I had to whittle down. I compromised to seven. Uh, <laughs> seven makes no sense besides the fact that I like odd numbers. Um, also, in Harry Potter, it's the most powerful number. So, maybe there's something to that. But uh, yeah, we wanted to just have a fun kind of loose episode capturing what are the best things that we've read, watched, or played this year. Um, I think the hope is that not only will this give some insight maybe into our tastes, but possibly be kind of a recommended viewing guide for people for the holidays and maybe inspire some people to check some of these books or movies or games or shows out um, while people have some downtime. I'm kind of excited to do this. I mean, we, we rank at the end of every episode. You know I'm a ranker. I love lists. I love compiling these things, even though they're completely superficial and have no bearing on reality. Um, but I'm pretty pumped. Before we get into it, um, where can people follow the show? Yeah, the best way to follow the show and get in touch with us is on Instagram at Read, Watch, Play Podcast, all one word. You can follow us there. We put up polls. We ask questions. You know, we want to hear from you. It'll keep you up to date on when the new latest episodes are coming out. So uh, go give us a follow. And you can also follow us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Any follow and five-star rating you can give us helps. So uh, be liberal with those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going to rate anything other than five stars, just don't even rate it. Yeah, um, we, don't, we don't want you to do that. We don't want that. Um, yeah, you can also email us at gmail, read, watch, play, pod. Um, write into us. Let us know your thoughts. We have a few listener submissions this week that we're going to read out. So if you want to nice. be read on the show, have some kind of say into what we're chatting about, uh, yeah, you can reach out to us in any of those those channels. Um, as we get into this, I'm just curious, maybe a little bit of inside baseball on Nick Hinkson. How did you put your list together? How did, how did you think about this? Was mm, Yeah. So the hardest part for me was remembering what I've read, watched, and played this year. Thankfully, there's things like Letterbox and Goodreads that track that for you, and you can go back and figure out what you did in February. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Letterbox uh, was huge for me. Yeah, I the problem was I only started a Letterbox in like August when we were talking about it, so yeah. I had things that I remembered from earlier in the year. So we're gonna we're just gonna fly off the cuff for this one with seven, you know? Yeah. Um. But I know you're a list maker, so you've probably been ranking everything you've you've seen since since January first of last year. How, yeah, was this I, a I rank, difficult process for you? No, not at all. I ran, or it was to whittle it down, but I rank, yeah. I re-rank. Um, I'm actually new to the letterbox world too, and I think for those who like data and that type of thing, um, it's a great it's a great app. People are really annoying actually on it. Like if you read the reviews, people try and be really funny with one-liners and they're just really not. But Letterbox <laughs> as a service is, it's really excellent. It's like super helpful to see what you watched this year, when you watched it, what you thought. And it was kind of my guide for like, how do I sort through this list? Um, the other thing I was curious about, was this a good year of content for you? Like as you look back on it, did you feel like you watched, saw, read a lot of good things? I did. And this might be one of the best years in a while, content-wise, for yeah. both reading and watching. Um, you know, we had some summer blockbusters, which we really haven't had in a while. Uh, read some great trilogies. Some great things I read didn't make the list because um, I tried to keep this list more towards what I think, you know, general viewers might like. But uh, I would say it's an A-plus year. I've already got next year planned out for what I'm reading uh, on my own and you know what we're going to do for this and uh, what we're going to watch and I think next year is going to be fantastic so I'm really yeah. excited for 2024 yeah yeah I agree I, when you said that there was a good year for blockbusters I was listening to there's a podcast that is hugely inspiring to me that I listen to a lot called the big picture good movie podcast I'm from the ringer and they were saying in their kind of end of year wrap up that this is the first year since 2001 that a sequel or a remake wasn't in the top three 
uh, box office. Really? Because um, we had, do you know what the top three were this year? Just I'm going to say uh, Barbie 1, Oppenheimer 2. Can I get a hint on three? Uh, it is animated. Spider-Man? Nope. Earlier. It was an early in the year. I don't know. What was it? Uh, Super Nintendo Mario Bros. movie. Oh, well, that yeah. could be a sequel. There's like 13 other adaptions. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's at but, least a remake. Yeah. 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 I guess it is uh, an original story, um, but it has been covered before. It comes from IP, which yeah. I mean, I guess kind of Barbie does too, but. And um, I mean, Oppenheimer was a book, so. Yeah. So it, yeah. Adaptation, but. I think it was a a little bit refreshing and I think people liked that, that there's this, even though after the top three, they were talking about this in the podcast, you see the usual suspects, you see a lot of superhero movies and big IP, but the things that really took off and grabbed the popular culture this year were not what has been popular the last 10 to 15 years at the box office. So it was a, it was a good return to form that I think in the gaming world was people are calling this maybe the best gaming year since I don't know, maybe 2017, but I think even before that, it was a really good year in gaming. Um, Interesting thing, putting this list together, I don't read or play many things that come out real time. Like, I don't think I read a book that was released in 2023. So maybe a little background on the structure of the show, kind of how we put this together is this is just something we had to have experienced for the first time this year either read, watch, or play. Um, because I don't, I played maybe one game that was released in 2023. Everything else I played was released years ago. All the books I read, <laughs> The Shining I read, came out 40 years ago. Um, so that's a little bit of how we'll be approaching this too. Um, yeah, so we'll be counting down from seven to one, uh, giving some sort of personal anecdotes to why it made our list. And... Uh, it's kind of sprinkling in some listener comments along the way. Yeah. Um, I think I didn't even check with you on this, but I also took this as my personal favorites, not what I consider like the best. Cause I think there is a distinction. I don't know. Is there to you? Um, let me reorder my list right now. <laughs> I mean, you can, you can no, take kidding. it however yeah, you yeah. want it. Yeah. Uh, no, I did my personal favorites. I did not do what the, the order of this list is my personal favorites. They cool. all, I think, hold up, but I, you might disagree with this order completely and that's totally fair. Yeah, totally. Yeah. They're meaningful Actually, not, to you can't do that. If you disagree with my list, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'll be. It's my I'll birthday. Be, you can't disagree with me hurt. today. Yeah, that's true. Happy birthday. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Awesome. So we're going to kick it off here starting with seven. And I think a note on spoilers, I probably, we won't directly spoil the things we cover. We're going to obviously talk about them and, you know, why it was, why it mattered to us. You know, example being, you know, if I was, if I had seen The Empire Strikes Back for the first time, I might say, I really enjoyed the twist at the end, but I'm not going to say, you know, Darth Vader is Luke's father. Um, Snape, so. <laughs> Snape kills Dumbledore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'll, uh, we'll try and keep it um, sort of high-level recommendations, but we definitely want to give insight into why it was meaningful to us. So just a note there that uh, I hope even if you haven't seen all the things, you know, don't be worried that we're going to spoil it for you here. Well... Nick, do you want to uh, kick it off with your number seven entry? Yeah. And actually for number seven, I am already going to break the mold and I'm going to go with a podcast that I found this year and listened to. Uh, Michaela and I do a lot of driving, right? We'll drive to Georgia all the time. We'll, we've driven to Nashville, Asheville, like we've driven all over. And one of the things that we've really enjoyed doing in the cars, listening to podcasts. And one in particular is the Petty Crimes podcast. Have you heard of it? Um, I feel like I've heard ads for it. Yeah. So each week, Petty Crimes co-hosts and longtime friends, Kira and Griff, passionately investigate minor interpersonal disputes, arriving at a verdict with each case examined thoroughly. It's uh, 
it's like a true crime podcast, but everything's just people being petty. And they decide if it was petty, if it wasn't, if it was criminal, if it was minimal. It's really funny. I highly recommend it. They're like 30 minute episodes, I want to say. So yeah. we'll listen to four or five in a row and then take a break. But it, I mean, it's an easy way to, to get a laugh in and, and it's really enjoyable. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I'm all about the petty. So I bet that's a lot of fun. <laughs> people are out. Some of these stories, I almost question if they're real because people are so ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. What so is you mean, just like an example of like one that sticks out to you that you liked? Um, one we listened to on the way to, to Georgia a couple of days ago was related to a middle school prank. And apparently what the kids are doing these days is they'll like grab each other's water bottles and chug it. And that's the prank. Yeah. Um, but these kids didn't like the, what their ringleader was doing. So they bought, they went out and stole <laughs> some liquid laxative and put it in their water bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so dumb and dumb this style. kid's just chugging liquid laxative. And oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they investigated that. Uh, the latest episode, I'm on Spotify right now. Uh, oh, best place to start dog drama from March 8th, 2022, 32 minutes long is what it says on here. So yeah, I highly recommend you check it out. Yeah. If you have it sounds it. like a good driving at the airport type of podcast, just trying to like kill 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Or honestly going for a walk at the gym. Yeah. Something. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, what about you? What do you got in this, uh, the seventh slot? Um, I'm having a lot of angst even as we're getting into the seven slot because I have this seven, eight that has been flip-flopping, but I'm going to stick to what I have here. And for me, it was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. Um, after um, something else on my list, this was, I was really nervous for this. I love the Guardians movies. Um, I'm a big, big fan and they're probably my favorite movies in the MCU. Really? They have killer soundtrack, great That's cast old, of characters. Old statement, Cotton. Yeah. Do you like the Guardians movies? Yeah, they're good. Yeah. I like you, them. I'm, we haven't even talked about this. Are you an MCU guy? Like, do you like the Marvel movies? Oh, I, I enjoy a good uh, action hero. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. Or superhero. I yeah. guess it'd probably be the better way to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was a late bloomer to the MCU. I did not see nearly any of the movies until COVID year. And when what? I was sick, yeah. What I rock watched, were you living under for like 12 years? I saw Iron Man, um, the OG Avengers, um, and the Guardians movies. And that was it. And then during when I had COVID, I binge watched all of them. Uh, and it was a wild ride. Had a lot of fun with it. Um, but even heading into this, the Guardians were the only ones I saw and loved. And I thought they were just like so much fun and heartwarming. And even though the villains are like pretty meh in them, just like the yeah. character arcs and the dynamics, I just, I really loved them. And I knew that this was going to be the last one. And I was sad because, you know, I was going to be saying goodbye to these characters and James Gunn was also going to be leaving. And I, I just loved the movies he did with Marvel. Um, and I just, I thought they really landed the plane well and gave a satisfying conclusion, even though there were aspects of the third movie that were really difficult to watch. And my fiance will never watch guardians three again. Um, <laughs> it was, it was a, it was a great send off and I'm really happy that it, finds a spot on my list uh with how much anticipation i had for it okay what uh, was your you, number eight what was your fsu what didn't make the playoffs here uh it was my surprise of the year and that was uh mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem uh it was okay. such a fun movie and it's yeah the reason it almost slips in is because i know i'm going to rewatch this all the time it was so creative such a new take on the turtles being like actual teenagers, which is such a cliche thing to say now, but loved it. She had, had a blast with that movie. Okay. Uh, what do you got for number six? All right. You ready for this one? I think you're going to, you're going to laugh at me. I've got home alone Two: lost what? in New York. You've never seen home alone Two? <laughs> never. 
<laughs> I saw the, obviously I've seen the first one. Home Alone is yeah. such a classic. And we were looking at it and my girlfriend goes, let's watch the second one. And I was like, no, 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 let's watch the first. You know, why would we yeah. watch the second one when the first one's so good? And then when she found out I had never even seen it, she's like, okay, you don't get to say anymore and put it on. Yeah. And it works. It's so campy and it's so fun. You know, you, and then I found this meme that uh, <laughs> Piers Morgan looks just like the bird lady. He really I, does. I can't get that out of my head now. Yeah. And yeah, great movie. Very classic. Um, don't know why it works twice that you leave your time. It should work. It should not work. And also, this child ends up in New York, right, by themselves for the second yeah. Christmas in a row that they've left in. And when his dad gets the hotel bill, he freaks out. It's like 900 bucks. And I'm like, like, I'm sorry, 900 bucks in New York for like a few nights and room service is yeah. one, probably pretty realistic even today. And yeah. two, the least you owe your son. You've lost the right to be angry. <laughs> yeah, I have two vivid memories of that movie from like that are just burned into my brain. Of course, the pigeon lady. Um, and I also just always think of that pizza opening up. I don't know why. It's just imprinted in my brain. Your cheese pizza, sir. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, it, it has, it's better than it has any right to be for a sequel that just, it's, it's the type of sequel that would just totally flop normally. It'd yeah. be a straight to VHS then, but it works and it's great. <laughs> yeah. It's that it's because you have these, you know, real actors and actresses leaning into camp so yeah. hard that I think it works yeah, and totally. no one takes themselves too seriously. Yeah. Yeah, Joe Pesci acts it like he is in the Goodfellas sequel, not like right. he's in Home Alone 2. <laughs> right. But but at the same time, he's slipping on ice, like, yeah. you know, and has his legs flying around. I'm just, yeah. I love, I thought it was great. I, I yeah. really enjoyed it. Um, Yeah, enough said. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So, it made the list. That's what awesome. you got? Let's, let's get your number six. Yeah. I, I actually, I didn't tell you this yet. Um, I, I broke the rules a little bit on the movie end and I okay. I put in only movies that I watched that came out this year. The only reason I did that was because I have probably, I mean of 2023 movies, I've probably seen 40 to 50 movies that were released this year of movies total. I've probably seen like 150. So it was Jeez. just too many that I had to cut them down. <laughs> We've watched a lot of other movies. No. <laughs> I know. I'm kidding. Um, I can, uh, maybe if we have time at the end, I'll give you a few of my older movies that I watched this year for the first time that I really loved. Um, okay. Anything but, older than Home Alone 2? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, number six for me, uh, this is so funny coming after Home Alone, but I'm going to go Oppenheimer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> could, could not be more different. Um, I don't really want to Really lighthearted films. You know, I don't. really... <laughs> Leaning yeah, into just, the holiday spirit here. <laughs> I know. It's, yeah, could not have a uh, better double feature. Um, <laughs> Actually, wanna, kind of works. Kind of works. I don't want to completely give away all my thoughts as we might be covering this in the next month or so. Uh, but I thought this movie was great. I had a really great experience watching this at the theater. I think the Trinity test in general was one of my favorite sort of movie theater moments of the year and i i thought he did it i mean he took a what seven eight hundred page kind of slog of a, of a book at times and converted it into a three-hour movie that didn't feel like three hours that's like partially black and white i thought it was great i thought the supporting cast was amazing um i thought it was nolan at some of his best um and i really enjoyed it i mean We'll talk more about it in the uh, the future episode, but I really yeah. enjoyed Oppenheimer. Cool foreshadowing there. Yeah. Um, before we get to our five entries, I want to read a few uh, write-ins we had. Yeah. Um, Do and it. Also, Let's hit it. I love when that. you write in. Yeah, when you write in on Instagram or Gmail or whatever, let me know if you want to be called something specific, or I'm literally just going to call you whatever you're discord or twitter name is <laughs> um so captain n writes in and says uh sea of stars was my 2023 joyful pleasure 
I expected it to be good, but the game blew my mind with how good it was. Great graphics, stellar music, and a story that left me smiling and satisfied. This was a huge, I don't know if it's considered an indie. I think it might be. Um, this was a huge sort of, I don't know. I don't think love letter is the right word, but people really adored this game um, this year. And it really kind of took the gaming world by storm for a little bit. Um, I have it downloaded. I haven't played it yet. It's free on uh, PS Plus, PlayStation Plus, if you have that service. Um, so check it out. I also do want to shout out that uh, Captain N is the co-host of a great retro gaming podcast called Retrotopia. So uh, check that out if nice. you can. Have you yeah, ever seen Stars? Check that one out. No, I haven't. I haven't played it, but uh, it comes across my list when I like Google like new games to play. It always pops up. Um, I have to move that to the top of the list. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I think. I think I'm gonna. I don't know if I'll play it over the break. Um, but it could be a nice little holiday holiday playthrough with some time off. Yeah. Um. Another kind of listener comment this year was Sam, aka Storm Beagle, writes in and says. This year seems to have stretched on forever, but here are my favorites from the year. I read American Gods for the first time. I believe that's by Neil Gaiman. Gaiman? I don't know. How how do you say that? Neil Gaiman? I think it's Neil Gaiman. Um, Not sure how I slept on that one for so long. I watched Everything Everywhere All at Once, and I think that was my favorite new movie that I saw. And I played Super Metroid and Metroid Fusion for the first time. And I think those are neck and neck this year. Um... I've heard a lot of good things about American Gods. Have you read that? No. Have you are you have you read any Neil Gaiman? Yes. Let me uh let me verify that real quick. I have Before seen I like Coral- Coraline, which I know he wrote, but I haven't read that. No. I don't think I have read any of his his work, but there's a lot of titles on here yeah. that that stick out. Yeah, we'll have to get him on the list. Yeah, yeah. Some of these I did know our, our movies. Mm-hmm. Our I did shows. pick up uh, American Gods on recommendation from someone, so it's on my my to read list. Uh, I'm okay. pretty excited. Um, thanks for writing in, Sam uh, Storm Beagle. He's also uh, he's actually co host with Captain N on Retrotopia. Nice. Uh, what do you got for number five? Ooh, for number five, I'm going to go with the uh, the only video game that's on my list. The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. First time playing through. Was this year? Yeah. I'm not finished. I'm still playing through it, but I am really enjoying it. Yeah. Yeah, you're a big Witcher fan, right? Yeah. Yeah, I have the books. Uh, I've really enjoyed the show. Played the first Witcher game. Thought it was, you know, good, not great. Review of the second one were like that as well. I remember the third one being hugely popular, but just life got in the way and I didn't get a chance to play it. I think I was playing Skyrim at the time, so I was just thinking like... My, my time into that game and uh it felt time to come back to to the game so yeah. i did it uh i don't play a ton of video games anymore you know, just time reasons not for anything other than you know lack of lack of free time but uh really enjoying it can't wait to see how it ends i mean yeah sure i can guess how it ends but it's really cool to see actually after watching the show and then now playing this game it's really cool to see an adult series yeah. Have you read the book yet? Mm-hmm. Or books? And I'm not, I haven't read all of the Witcher books, but I've read all of the ones that the show has covered. Yeah. That'll be an interesting one when we get to it as there's book, show, and game, that there's a yeah. lot to discuss there. <laughs> yeah. And I know and a lot of feelings on it by people. There's a lot of feelings on uh, Henry Cavill's departure we're going to have to talk about too. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of feel I I have not seen The Witcher. I've not played The Witcher yet. Um, in general, I kind of feel for Henry Cavill. Like he keeps getting cast in these sort of big roles, and then just like things happen behind with the IP behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think of him as Superman, and even though I didn't really like Man of Steel, uh, I mean, I think if you were to close your eyes and picture superman you probably see someone that looks like henry cavill like he was really well cast i think in that role yeah um and people say the same thing for the witcher you know I, I, people were really appreciative that like he is a nerd he's a gamer he like loves the story and yeah. that's great to have very true of. to the character yeah 
Um, give, me your, give me your five and then give me your four. Back to back. Yeah. I want to hear Back to them. back. All right. Uh, five for me was Babylon. Uh, this is a movie that I think was, I don't want to say overlooked by the general public and, you know, come off like a hipster um, because it was popular. But I think even by those who have seen it, it is a real love hate. Um, this actually did come out technically, I think, Christmas last year, uh, but we saw it uh, in the early part of the year. And man, I fall firmly in the camp of people who love it. It is essentially a story, for those who don't know, that tracks the rise and fall of multiple characters set in the golden era of Hollywood. Uh, stars Brad Pitt and Margot Robbie. It's not perfect, but it is so maximalist and ambitious that I love it. It contains these like super extravagant scenes that are so well written, shot, and acted. Um, that is just incredible. One of my biggest regrets was not seeing this in theaters. And it's kind of a, a life's goal for me at this point to do that. Um, not a spoiler at all, but two scenes in particular I want to shout out. Uh, the first being they cover sort of filming of this battle scene in the 1920s. And it's just completely outrageous. And, you know, Brad Pitt just like hamming it up. And it's cut with Margot Robbie's like birth as an actress in the movie. And it's just ludicrous. Um, and the second is... Uh, there's this, the movie shows the transition from silent era films to sound films. Okay. And it's almost like this Tarantino esque scene of them trying to record or film a movie with sound and people are like breathing too loud and they can't get the sound right. And people are like literally like passing out on set. It is just like so funny and hilarious. Um, and Oh, it's just incredible. It's I loved it so much. And it's one of those movies that it's just stuck with me and I think about it. And maybe people go watch it and hate it. Um, and there's a lot of people who do, but if you're like me, you might watch this and love this. And it's it's a long one. Um, but it's it was a blast. Have you seen Babylon? I haven't, but based on that recommendation, it's gonna go on the list. And when I hate it, I am absolutely gonna let the listeners know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, though I think you're also in the, uh, the Brad Pitt fan club. So oh, for sure. It's, it's hard to dislike a movie that he's in if, if you're a fan of him, um, yeah. or he's just being Brad Pitt for three hours. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, big kid wrote in and said, this didn't come out in 2023, but I got a PlayStation this year. And the best thing I've played is God of War Ragnarok. Big kid. You are 100% correct. That is one of the best things. Uh, <laughs> and I did the same exact thing this year, which we're going to get to my my next entry, which is God of War Ragnarok. Have you played any of the God of War games? No, I didn't. I didn't realize that was a game. If I'm being honest, Thor Ragnarok, I did not. Oh, Ragnarok. sorry, God, God of War. Oh, God of War. Uh, no. 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 Yeah, I, I played them loosely as a kid. Like, I didn't own them, but I played them at, like, friend's house. Like, I knew the concept. You're yeah. obviously the god of war, and you're going through, like, ancient Greece or whatever, killing gods. <laughs> um, and, but I completely slept on it, and then they basically revamped the, or sort of reset the god of war franchise in 2018 with a new okay. release that was unbelievable like so good moved him more into norse mythology um and it blew me away it was uh it was so good and i was really excited for this sequel um and i was really hoping that they would kind of expand upon this world and i was also nervous of can they recreate that magic again and they really did um it was an incredible revisit to the story the cast of characters that kind of blossoms out from this one was so good. The twists and turns were, I think, really amazing. The voice acting, as always, was so good in uh, this one. And I had a blast. I think it is no doubt the best game I played this year, maybe even the past two to three years. Um, and yeah, it's a to me, if you have a PlayStation, it's kind of a, a must-play series. Um, so super happy that this found its way onto my list. To add it to the list. Yeah. Um, Play it right after The Witcher 3, so I'll get to it in about two years. Yeah, that's the same. How long this is taking me. I know. Well, that's, a, that's the other thing is like, 
it's easy to have a lot of movies because you can watch a movie in such a condensed period of time. Yeah. Two hours. I mean, a game takes me, I only play a few games a year because it takes me so long. I only read a few books a year, especially if one of them's Oppenheimer um, because there's just so many uh, or there's just so much to consuming them. Yeah. So what did you have for your number four? Ooh, my number four. Okay. I'm going to give the horror genre a shout out here. And I saw this movie called The Empty Man. And it, I think it's a little bit slept on. It's a newer movie. Um, I'll read you here. Let me read you the, I pulled it up. Let me read you the synopsis. On the trail of a missing girl, an ex-cop comes across a secretive group attempting to summon a terrifying supernatural entity. And that's all I want to say about it because I don't want to give anything away. But I feel like if your name's not Jordan Peele, you you haven't done a lot of great things in horror lately. Um, this is the exception. I I think this holds up. It's it's rated okay, but like I don't know. You gotta kind of like take everything in the horror genre, subtract a letter grade, and then that or add a letter grade, and that's what it should be. Um, yeah, I don't know. If you're a fan of horror, I definitely recommend The Empty Man. It's like a like a two hour movie, maybe. I think it's on Hulu right now. Yeah, I was gonna say people can watch it on Hulu. I think so. Yeah. We we definitely watched it on a streaming service. And I'm okay. Ninety percent sure we watched it on Hulu. Nice. When did it come out? Twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. So yeah, it's I've, recent ish. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're more tapped into the horror genre, but I haven't I haven't seen that one. Um, yeah, it's just it's just one I think maybe got slept on a little bit in the horror genre. I mean, obviously if Jordan Peele comes out with a movie, you should go watch it because it's going to be something that's forever a classic in the horror genre. He is the exception to the rule right now when yeah. in horror with just great, great content consistently. Yeah. What is, what is the, uh, what is the subgenre of horror? You would say empty man is like, like it's like a mystery, like supernatural mystery, mystery horror. Okay. Okay. It, so it like, might even you might even call it a thriller. Yeah, I was really? gonna say some thriller elements to it. Yeah, nice. Um, it, it kept me on the edge. Of, I think it, the score was really good at keeping me on the edge of my seat when I was supposed to be. Yeah. Did you read any horror books this year? None that I had consumed for the first time. None. Okay. I mean, I reread The Shining. I th I reread Carrie. Um, yeah. But I haven't, I haven't read any new horror books. But actually, um, for my birthday, I just got a copy of Holly, okay, the new um, Stephen King book, nice. which has a it's there's a Hulu series about it now. So okay. I'll definitely be reading that and watching that in 2024. So maybe this time next year, I've got a, a new Stephen King entry for you. Nice, yeah. I'm 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 eager to uh, to get into more of his his backlog. Uh, a few more write-ins. Uh, Unbuckled Cape, friend of the pod and host of Unbuckled Comics, writes in and says, The only book I've read this year is A World Undone by G.J. Meyer, and I highly recommend it if you are interested in World War I history. It's full of unbelievable information regarding strategy, politics, and the horrors of the Great War. Okay. You're a little bit of a, at least as a child, I remember you being a little bit of a history buff. Are you, are you still that way? Do you still enjoy reading these type of books? I do. And yeah. I'm going to go, I've, I'm writing that down as we're, as you're talking, cause I'm going to go check yeah. that one out for sure. Yeah. I saw him write in and I was like, this seems like something Nick either yeah. has read it and like discussed right with his alley, dad. To be honest. I'm surprised I haven't read it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm pretty interested in that too. I, I do like uh a history. Um, I like to rotate kind of my genres of reading, um, but I love a good history, history novel, um, especially about things from kind of that era. Uh, so thanks for writing in on Buckle Cape. Um, he also said that uh, on the gaming front, the one he wanted to shout out was Cadence of Hyrule. The, those familiar oh, with- yeah, yeah, yeah. Or sorry, this familiar Hyrule cranks out the jams that are still stuck in my head today. Couple that with 2D Zelda and you got my memorable gaming experience of the year. Um, and then as far as movies go, uh, he said he has to write in a new movie, has to be Ghostbusters Afterlife, but Casablanca was a close second. So on Buckle Cave, you're only 80 years behind the times <laughs> with uh, your your viewing of Casablanca. Um, yeah, a real recent entry to our, <laughs> our list of yeah. top movies. Yeah, literally 
writes in about a book set in the Great War and a movie that came out during the Great War. So way to go and buckle cape. Um, actually, have not it seen the like a theme war. there. <laughs> yeah, seriously, yeah, there's, like, we need there's to- no real World War One year for unbuckled. <laughs> yeah, seriously, maybe we need to get him a time machine. Um, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I have not seen it, but I've heard great things about the new the new ist Ghostbusters movies that have a uh, oh what's his name from Stranger Things. Um, I don't know. It'll come to me, but um, I can't help you there. I don't know any of their names. If I'm being completely honest with you, I haven't watched that since season two. Really? Ooh. Yeah. It, it's one of those. I just you know sometimes you like fall behind, and I've just never caught up. Mm-hmm. That happens. They're That's, on what season five now? Six. Uh, last year was season four, and then the final season will be season five. Um, Finn Wolfhard—that's his name. Uh, he's in them, and I think Paul Rudd is either in the newest or in the new ones. Um, people talk highly of them. I'm excited to see them. So, thanks for writing in, uh, Mr. Cape. Um. What do you have for uh, your number three? Yeah, for my number three, I'm, I'm a little torn on this one, but yeah. uh, I feel like to to kick off the top three, I need to throw in a book because as I'm looking at this list, I realize that I left off all of the books I've read. So, and I'm going to be honest with you, Randy. I might have consumed this last year. I cannot remember if it was early this year or late last year. So full disclosure, but yeah. the uh, the silent patient. Okay, I've heard of that. Yeah, it was. It's honestly one of the best books I think I've ever read. I'm gonna. It's it's in my hall of fame. I mm-hmm. gave it a five star on Goodreads. I mean, it is. It's a story about um, this woman. This isn't a spoiler. This is going to be on the back of the book. This woman kills her husband. And then immediately stops speaking. No one can get her to say another word. And wow. this therapist thinks that he he's the one who can get her to speak again. And it's about him, you know, uprooting his life and going to the asylum that she's that she's staying in and that relationship. And there's a couple twists and turns along the way. It's really well done, really well written. Highly recommend. Ten out of ten. Nice. Yeah. I very interested to read that now. Um, and it's a pretty quick read too. It's only like two to 300 pages, I think. Yeah. And I, I think I, I think I read it in two days. I, I yeah. could not put the book down. Yeah. Love that. Um, yeah. It's, that's something you can just like easily knock out like very quick over the holidays. Um, yeah. Might pick that up. Uh, who's it by? I can't pronounce his last name. I'm, yeah. I'll pull it up, but I'm going to butcher this. Alex Michaelides, M I C H A E L I D E S. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea how to say that either. So, no help. <laughs> um, this one I think would actually make a, a good mini series. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I would want a, like a full nine episodes out of this ten episodes, yeah. but like a three parter. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, kind of like a mayor of East town or something. Um, yeah, I'm interested. Add it to the list. Yeah. Give me your, uh, give me your three, then give me your two. Uh, number three for me. And I don't need to espouse on it too much as we did a whole pod on it, but the shining, um, I mean, what a great fucking book. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like yes. just truly gripping start to finish i just i don't even know what else to say if you want to hear more on it go listen to the episode but it's stephen king just hitting dingers for however many pages it is it's an incredible book i got you some topiaries for christmas no i'm done i can (laughs) i can never have foliage in my lawn again never going in a tunnel ever again (laughs) um just so good. Uh, I loved it. I It was one of those books that just sticks in your mind. You can't put it down. And almost, you know, you just already think like, oh, I can't wait to reread this again. And 
you can completely tell that it will be a completely rereadable book. Oh, that yeah. just brings whole new context and meaning to it, and you'll see things and pick up on things that you didn't before. Uh, you got to check out The Shining and read it if you haven't. Even if you're a baby like me, um, read it during the daytime. That's what I did, and you'll be good to go. <laughs> um, my number two uh, was Across the Spider Verse. This. Ooh is the closest thing I have to a, f I wouldn't say closest thing to a five-star movie this year. I think Oppenheimer and even, it's not on my list, but Killers of the Flower Moon, objectively, I think very incredibly made movies. But yes. Across the Spider-Verse, personally, is my closest sort of five-star movie. I was a late bloomer into the Spider-Verse by many years. And... um Similar to what you said about Stranger Things, it's one of those things that you just, I didn't see it right away. And then you just miss it and then it gets hyped up and you're like, do I even want to watch this because it has such high expectations now? And it just kind of passes you by. And that happened for me. And we didn't watch the OG Spider-Verse movie until weeks before Across the Spider-Verse. And okay. we loved it. And then when you go into the theater and I'm like, how do they top that? Like, can they really bring that type of heat again in the sequel? And they did. Like it was, it was, I think in my opinion, better than the, than the first one. I think these movies are so gorgeous. The story is incredible. The supporting cast is amazing. And there's so much heart in the Spider-Verse movies. And I think that's essential to a spider-man movie even though this is miles morales but kind of that spider-man universe like it has to be about this come this perpetual coming of age story about this kid who's just trying to make this friendly neighborhood and maybe the world a better place and while he's still being a kid and making dumb decisions um and i just loved it i mean the the end i thought was incredible and just threw me for a loop and you know, like I said, there's a lot of debate over which is better. And to me, this is almost like Lord of the Ring, this, the trilogy, where just dissecting which is better is like, they're all amazing. Um, but like Lord of the Rings, Two Towers is the best movie, and Across the Spider-Verse is the best entry so far in this uh, trilogy. So I loved it. Yeah, you're going to reach through the the computer and smack me, but I haven't seen that one yet. Unbelievable. Have you seen Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah, I've seen Into okay. the Spider-Verse. I saw that one in theaters, but yeah. the second one I haven't seen. Uh, also, I don't know how I feel about you laying down such controversial uh, Lord of the Rings facts in our yeah, podcast. What's your, what's your favorite of the trilogy? I'm going to rewatch them. I have tomorrow off. I'm going to okay. rewatch them and I am going to... Yeah, follow you know. up. Cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll, do a, we'll do a Lord of the Rings episode where you and I battle for Gondor. Yeah, I love it. But uh yeah, I mean if you haven't if you haven't seen the Spider-Verse movies, check them out. They're a great holiday watch. They're a great family watch. Miles and all of the supported characters are just so so damn good. Um give it a shot. Uh what do you have for your number 2? Yeah, I, uh, man, I'm going to have to go with I I read the second third and one of the prequels to this. So I read the first book last year and I'm listening to one of the prequels now. Yeah. But there is, um, there is a series called the green bone saga by Fonda okay. Lee. And I want you to think like the Sopranos meets Asian culture with a very cool fantasy element. Uh, it's called Jade. It's just rock and it basically enhances all of your, um, like, you're lighter, faster, stronger. You can perceive yeah. better. Like it is so cool and it is so well done. And it's, you know, at the crux of it, it's a story about a family who happens to be gangsters. And yeah. it's honestly the first book I listened to it. So I'm guessing on about pages, but maybe like the first hundred pages, it's a little bit slow with the world building, but then there's an event that happens. And from that, through everything else that happens that she wrote, 
unreal. Fantastic. Just I love off. it. I, I have enjoyed this series so much and I think yeah. it's really accessible. It's written in a very, uh, very easy way to digest. The fantasy element is super easy to understand and who doesn't love a good gangster book? Yeah. Uh, actually, the audiobooks are incredible. They're narrated by a man named Andrew Casino, and he has this voice that is perfect for a gangster yeah. movie. And nice. I highly recommend it. Uh, it the books are Jade City. And then I forget what the second one's called, actually. I'm I'm super embarrassed that I'm blanking on that. And then Jade Legacy. Or Jade um Jade City, Jade War, Jade, Jade Legacy, and then the prequels are the Jade Setter of John Loon, and the then there's another prequel, um, which the the two prequels are actually short stories, so they're really easy to go through. But I would say you definitely don't want to start with them. You want to you want to come back to them because they add a lot of life to characters you've met in uh, the trilogy. Uh, I could talk about this for yeah. an hour, so I'm going to stop here. But it is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Jade City Green Bone Saga by Fonda Lee. Yeah. Never Fantastic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude, I'm interested. It, it won. A, the first one won like book of the year in the yeah. fantasy genre, uh, maybe like 20. Yeah. 18, yeah. I'm looking at it now. 2018. Yeah. Won fantasy award for best novel as well as the Aurora award. No idea what that is uh, for best novel just at large that year. Yeah. It's. I re- if you like audiobook, if you like reading, take it. I like the yeah. audiobooks because there's a lot of words. I've I've looked at a copy of the book. I might not have been able to get the the words right. Yeah, but hearing them, <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. And oh, yeah. uh, there's a lot of lore type of words. Are you saying? Yeah. So, like, um. For example, the continent they're on is called Kcon, but yeah. if you read it, you might get to like Kekin or something like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so um, it's like us in the upcoming Dune pod. <laughs> yeah. Well, speak for yourself, Kimasabi. Okay. Yeah. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> you literally couldn't say the director's name <laughs> for two hours. <laughs> um, even after you got lessons. No, it's just, it's a, it's a loving nickname, DV. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, love it. Yeah, I'll check that one out. Uh, our last write-in before we get to our top entries, uh, Super Dave, host of uh, Treehouse Anime Pod, writes in and says, reading Dragon Teeth by Michael Crichton, a very solid historical fiction about dinosaur fossil hunting during the bone wars of the 1800s with a heavy dose of the wild west. That sounds awesome by the way. Um, yeah. And an author we've already covered. So already covered. Yeah. Love Michael Creighton. We can bring him back. Yeah. Uh, I'm finishing my shelf of Creighton this year. And this book is one of the few I put on my Christmas list. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I am very interested in checking that out. Super Dave also wrote in and said, watch for me. It's got to be across the spider verse. My goodness. What a film I should have just read super Dave summing that up. Cause that's probably all I needed. Yeah. And, uh, on the gaming front, he said played Xenoblade Chronicles three future redeemed DLC. One of the best payoffs for me as a player of any gaming series and the setup for future oh, wow. games has me even more excited. I've heard a lot about the Xenoblade Chronicles. I haven't checked them out, but after super Dave's comment, I'm, pretty interested in uh getting into those a little bit uh great take also on spider verse super dave you are spot on that that is one of the best films of the year gotta know what is uh your number one i'm gonna go with the barbie oppenheimer double feature are you yeah okay I was wondering I when and if we were going to talk about Barbie. So I'm glad you're bringing this up now. Oh, Hit me with I don't it. think you could have asked for a better double feature for summer blockbusters. And while I didn't get to do the, the same day double feature with them, just didn't work out. I think both movies were incredible to what we talked about earlier. I was so happy to see non sequel movies top the box office and become global phenomenon. I thought the acting in both was incredible. Oppenheimer is probably 
going to work. It's definitely in my top 10. It might even work its way into my top five. I loved that movie for as much as we will talk about my thoughts on <laughs> the book when we yeah. cover, cover it. Um, I thought the movie was fantastic. I thought Barbie was fantastic. I think I quote Barbie like once a week minimum. Yeah. The Trinity uh, test was an iconic scene. It's already iconic, I think. Yeah. I got nothing else to say. They're, they're masterpieces. I think everyone should watch both of them. Yeah. Um, I do want to say first that you gave me so much shit for wanting a top 10 and having 18 <laughs> and you shoehorn two <laughs> entries in to your number one, just like Trojan horse this <laughs> in. Like, what the hell, dude? <laughs> Oh, uh, oh, I'm so upset I didn't do this. Um, but I'm really glad you, you can't brought have one without the other. You can't. And uh I was hoping Barbie is something that I will maybe other than Spider-Verse will rewatch more than any other movie on my list. Because that movie I, it was so much fun. I mean, we had so much fun. A great time seeing that movie. Um, it was just a blast and it's something as well that shouldn't work and it does. Uh, it was incredible. I, I loved it. Um, and yeah, paired up. I mean, there is no doubt that if you were to ask me like, what is the most important movie of 2023? I'd probably say Barbie, like it mm -hmm. brought movies back this summer. Um, and the pairing with Oppenheimer was just like something that can't be recaptured that was like completely fan driven yeah, and you can't force that can't force it. And it was awesome. Uh, and I agree. I mean, I said it already that the Oppenheimer was great. The Trinity test was, even though this is something you already know, it's going to happen. We read the book. We have lived in the world. Like we know what yeah. the Trinity test is and it was still like exhilarating to see in the theaters um, or even just at home. Like, and I think the third act works even better at home. Um, because it's so intricate and like played out. It was just, yeah, great. Uh, still angry at you, um, that you just totally Listen, Randy, bamboozled me, but the rules don't apply to me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, so, oh man, I should have slid a few more into mine. What the hell? Um, gotcha. my, yeah, my number one, uh, this is going to be no surprise to anybody who has listened to the podcast so far, but it was the last of us. Um, mm. This was my most anticipated thing to come out this year. And I feel like this is completely bad radio to have my number one be the thing we've just spent three hours talking about on our last two episodes. Yeah. It's pretty mid. I know, <laughs> but I was like, I mean, I think what makes me so happy is that so many people enjoyed this. And people who didn't play the game loved the TV show and got swept up in the excitement and, you know, the week to week release. And it was faithful, but it was not a copy paste. It was extremely well made, but it wasn't like the CGI fest. And the casting was great. The show running, the writing, it was just incredible. And I look back and I'm just so happy that they did it with this series. And I'm so excited for the future of it and I'm so happy that people got to experience the world of The Last of Us even though it's a devastatingly harrowing world to be in. Yeah. Um, so easily my my number one of the year. Great number one. Um, yeah, I, I kind of thought that was going to be on your list. So I had eight things on this list. I guess nine if you yeah. count my double feature. And The Last of Us is one that I cut out. I thought it was amazing but you're right we did just talk about it for god knows how many hours and yeah i knew it was going to be on your list so <laughs> so I you wanted, knew you were going to get to talk about it <laughs> yeah i was like I, I was like it's basically on my list too if i do that yeah. if i just take it out and put something else in yeah what was your hardest omission not on your list mm. i had two and they're both these fantasy like big epic fantasies um yeah one is The First Law by Joe Abercrombie. Uh, I have spent so many hours reading. The, there's nine of the 
nine of those books right now. And I mean, I think I read three of them last year and six of them this year. I mean, they're just awesome. Um, And then the other would be, I finished the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Mm -hmm. Sanderson, who if you're not familiar, Brandon Sanderson is um, kind of the, the, the Michael Jordan of fantasy right now. He's at the top of the field by a lot. And, and I really don't think many people can uh, compete with, his world building that he's set up across all of his series right now. He's done an excellent job. Um, yeah. He's got Kobe, Kobe Bryant consistency he, too. He does. He doesn't miss. Yeah. He's, nice. he's Steph Curry from 40 feet away. I mean, it just it doesn't matter, but he yeah. just shoots. I mean, he's not only writing, you know, in his various worlds, but he mm-hmm. also is finishing the wheel of time for Robert Jordan at this, at the same time. And I'm just like this. How do you do that? <laughs> I, yeah. I have no idea yeah he's got an incredible output and he seems like a nice guy yeah just I, I haven't watched a ton of interviews i don't actually know a ton about brandon sanderson I'm not mm-hmm. like standing him but from the little bit i have seen he does seem like he's a pretty nice guy so yeah that's cool too nice yeah my uh my hardest omissions were probably uh per- most heartfelt was uh loki season two I Loki is my favorite character in the MCU and Loki season one. I loved and season was two amazing. was just chef's kiss. It was a Loki beautiful with Owen Wilson. Come on. I know the chemistry is just insane. That was so hard for me to leave off. Um, you really feel like they're just buds. You in do real life. Yeah. I mean, they're just leaping off the screen and then the expansion of the cast a little bit in season mm-hmm. two. Um, Ki Hui Kwan, he was so much fun as Ob. Um, loved it, uh, so good. Um, the only others I want to give a just a quick shout out to um, David Fincher's The Killer. Great, great movie. Super okay. short, super just like no frills Fincher movie. It was a blast. And then uh, one that I watched that was a few years old now that I think you'll like uh, was The Haunting of Hill House. We watched Love this. The Haunting of Hill House. That was, uh, it was so well done. So for me, creepy and scary, but like. For everybody. Layered with just incredible sort of plot character dynamics. Yeah. Um, it was, it was, it was awesome. Um, it was by Mike Flanagan, who puts out these horror series each year on Netflix um, his this year entry, The Fall of the House of Usher, was a little bit of a miss for me, but Haunting of Hill House I thought was phenomenal. Yeah, I've watched it three times, like straight yeah. through with different people. Anytime someone says they want to watch it, I want to watch it with them. Yeah. Because now that I've seen it so many times, I know where the scares are coming so I can watch, yeah. see how they react to the scares. Yeah. And laugh um, at their face. <laughs> the There's one jump scare during the last two episodes that i literally screamed what the fuck not like that calm screamed it on the couch at <laughs> because it got me so bad i was not prepared for it um oh man just uh, i don't do well with that stuff um anything you're seeing in the next uh i mean today is december 20th 21st 21st your birthday um anything you you're seeing in these next 10 days that you think could shake up your list? Anything you, or you might read in during the break? I am about halfway through a bout of songbird and snakes. Yeah. So I am actually really enjoying that one. It's good world building. It is. Yeah. I can't wait for us to cover that. Um, Other than that, I'm probably watching a lot of really bad Hallmark Christmas movies with my family. (laughs) Uh, make me want to gouge my eyes out when the Hallmark channel doesn't get turned off for five days. And listen, yeah. there's nothing wrong with a great Hallmark Christmas movie, but after yeah. five days of 24 seven Hallmark movies, I've seen it. Yeah. There, you're not watching something I haven't seen. Even yeah. if it's brand new, I'll tell you what, the plot points are exactly the same. Why yeah. don't we throw on like, I don't know, Wicked Tuna. I'm not a big Wicked Tuna fan, <laughs> but it's something different. Something different. Yeah. I'd rather yeah. watch someone catch a fish at that point. <laughs> uh that's amazing what about um, you what do you got in the what do you got in the hopper um next week gonna go see ferrari the new michael mann movie and i'm pumped for that i'm a big michael mann fan okay. 
director of Heat, uh, Miami Vice. You I think am, that could break into your top seven? I think this could. Um, I've been also hearing good things about uh, Bradley Cooper's new movie that just hit Netflix last night, Maestro. Um, oh, I do want to see that. supposed to be very good. Um, watch that when I'm done watching 11,000 Christmas movies. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then the other one, which is a little hard to watch now, I think, but it's called Zone of Interest. It's getting a lot of Oscar buzz. It is about a family that, a German family that lives next to Auschwitz and they're farmers and they like, I don't I forget if they work at Auschwitz or it's apparently this incredible movie. Um, and it's exactly the type of things, you know, also if Unbuckled Kate wants to hop into his time machine and go back to that era, maybe something he'll like. Um, but I'm pretty Shots pumped. Fired. I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, I'm pretty pumped to see, to see that one. Um, as a wrap up, one of the things I do want to say, sad omission was Dune. I fully expected Dune part two to be on my list of this year's favorites and it got moved to next year. I'm excited to cover it with you. Um, that for sure would have made my, my top seven. <laughs> yeah. And if we had done Dune part one, um, like if that had come out this year, that would have been on my list too, because originally so that was something I had to leave off. But I saw that when it came out um, yeah. a couple of years ago, yeah. and, but rewatching it this year, I was like, oh man, this is great. I yeah. forgot how much I liked this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited for it. And I am pumped for the new one, uh, but it was missing for me at the end of the year. Um, okay. Yeah. But, uh, March, uh, March 1st, right? Yeah. As of March right now, 1st. March 1st, as of today. Yeah. Uh, we'll definitely be covering that right away when it gets released. Um, and that is a good segue because that's what's, that is what we're covering next. We're covering the original Dune uh, yep. novel, the first entry and the, the movie. If you have any thoughts or questions and you want to share them on Dune, uh, like Nick said, reach out to us at readwashplaypod at gmail.com. You can message us on Instagram. Nick, what are you, uh, what are you most looking forward to covering in the early part of 2024? Yeah, I just, I really wanted to call out the fact that uh, Argyle, which comes out in February, we're going to be covering in real time. The book comes out in January. So you're not behind, you know, read it, join us watching the movie. We're going to cover that. But if there's anything that you know of that is your favorite book, your favorite video game, and it's being adapted next year, let us know because there's a very real chance that we could cover it as it's coming out. And we would love to do that for the listeners. So please let us know on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Let us know. Um, yeah, and give a give a look at Argyle. I it's got a pretty star studded cast, and it's also coming from the director of the Kingsman movies. If you've seen those, and if you've seen them, you can totally see that sort of style coming yes. out in the Argyle trailer. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a fun one. It seems like an interesting concept. I didn't know anything about it until you shared it with me. So I'm excited to to get into the book um, in January and cover it. Cool. Cool. Um, and thanks for joining us for this holiday sort of special bonus episode counting down our favorite things from this year thanks to everyone who wrote in and shared theirs and I'm really excited to continue doing this next year uh, it was good to get this off the ground and get moving um, it's been a lot of fun yeah I'm definitely enjoying doing this thank you so much to everybody who has taken the time to listen to one or more of our episodes your support means the world to us uh, it's been overwhelming positive and uh i can't thank you enough yeah absolutely and like uh we said you know you can find us on spotify apple wherever you get your podcast five stars only and uh yeah share with a friend follow us uh thanks to everyone for listening thanks nick for joining me happy birthday to you. you happy holidays and happy new years to the listeners uh enjoy your time off or hopefully time off uh, during the holiday season take it easy